different than I normally do. Uh, we're just going to have, uh, trust a good time in the Word of God here this evening. Ma- uh, Psalm 40. One of the things you get here at our church is what we call a balanced diet. And that means this. We try to give you some strong meat. Try to give you some blessings. A little rebuke here and there. And some food. And once in a while just a little uh, ice cream and gravy and, and icing on the cake. And uh, not just the same thing. One of the mistakes preachers makes is, and is that when you go to the church, you hear just about the same stuff all the time. And they're pet peeves. And I guess all of us got them, but uh, I'll try to give you a balanced diet here. Ain't nothing wrong with ice cream and gravy, y'all. Uh, uh, let, let's, let's look at Psalm 40 and verse number 1. I'd like to use this scripture and work a little bit of my testimony into it tonight. Psalm 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit. And if you'll think about it, that's exactly what he done for you when you got saved. Hallelujah. That's a shouting ground verse right there. He brought me out of that old horrible pit that I was in and out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my going. Look at verse 3. And he hath put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. He said, when, there are a lot of people see what God's done for me uh, and they're going to see it and trust the Lord. Leave my mic's on here, y'all. Uh, this one here, and I'm going I'm to uh, use this a minute and show you something. Uh, I'm going to talk about that tonight and I'm going to preach from the mire to the choir. He took me out of the mire and put me in the choir. As one old preacher said, he took me off a hundred proof and put me on living water. There's all kinds of ways you can say it. But he got me out of that mess and give me something definitely to live for. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 23 said, The Lord brought them out. And that verse is interesting because I want you to think about it while I'm preaching tonight. He said, when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt's bondage, he said he brought us out that he might bring us in. He didn't just bring you out and leave you out here somewhere. He brought us out that he might bring us in. The Lord didn't bring us out of that old life just to, just to leave us here. He brought us out so that he can take us in one day. He brought us out so he can bring you in. That's in Deuteronomy chapter 6 about the nation of Israel, also true as individuals like you and I. I want to say just four things about this. It's going to be really quick and short, uh, but it's sort of like my testimony. Number one, that verse said, he brought me out. He brought me out. My, 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 my. Could we talk about that all night long? He brought me uh, out. I notice it did not say, y'all, it didn't say he brought me up. Uh, he, uh, because that would imply he was up here and reached down and pulled me. He brought me out. He came down here and got down here with me and got me and picked me up. He came down here and became like one of us. I'm telling you, the Lord took on sinful flesh just like you and I walk around in every day and he walked down here in this world and he got a hold of me, got a hold of you and brought us out. Thank God. I was 18 years old the night the Lord brought me out. I'm gonna give you, you know, not much of my testimony. Y'all heard my testimony. I never was on drugs or alcohol or anything like that, but I was a wicked sinner. I played rock music. I listened to music every single day. The worst music of that time. You know, that's back in the old, old Alice Cooper and all them come out there. I mean, that's pretty bad. I never forget old Ed McAbee uh, when Alice Cooper come out. Ed McAbee got up in the in the camp meeting over at Nebo, and he said, uh, he said, uh, he said, the first thing that struck me was his name. He said, back where I come from. We don't name boys Alice. <laughs> and I'll never forget him saying that. And uh, boy, that old, them old rock singers, they're getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And I played old Jimi Hendrix uh, I, and, and other stuff like that that I listened to. And I was full of the devil. Let me tell you, 
I, I, I was played basketball all the way through high school, so I didn't get out. You know, we didn't get, there wasn't no time to get out and do anything. Now, the year I graduated, I graduated, I turned 17 in November of my senior year. That means I was 16 in the 12th grade. And the Lord did that so that I could have that year out to get saved. I wasn't in school, and it might have kept me getting saved. I don't know. Daddy snuck me in Clinksville School when I was five, and uh, not kindergarten, first grade. We didn't fool kindergarten back then. It's a waste of time anyway. Still is. And, uh, and they, they, uh, uh, I went to school. I was 16 in, in November. I turned 17. So during my, my senior year, I, I didn't get my driver's license until I was November of my uh, junior year. And we played ball all the time. So I'm not trying to make it sound like I'm some kind of goody two-shoes. I'd have been in all kind of sin if it hadn't have been for that. But I got out, and uh, i never forget me and these boys. I was about 15, and uh, these boys that lived over from me, we go down there and ride my bicycle down there all the time. Uh, they said, uh, we're going to get drunk. And I said, what do you mean you're going to get drunk? And they said, man, we're going to... And one of them had read some or heard some. He figured out how to make wine. And we was going to make this muscadines wine. And everybody, we eat muscadines all the time. Go, Y'all let me know what muscadines are. Okay. Uh, we, we got them muscadines. And them things are good, man. Uh, you chew them things, the, the hull on them things like a piece of leather. It's a lot thicker than a grape. And, uh, and, and we eat them things. Well, he did it. He, he knew how he said he did. They knew how to fix it, put yeast in there. He said, we're going to squeeze these mus- muscadines out. We're going to put all in this jar, one of these mason jars. And he said, it'll be fermented. And next Friday night, we was all going to cook out uh, or camp out and get drunk. That was their plan. i be honest with you. I was leery of it uh, from, from the word go. I said, I don't, you, you, you guys don't, you don't know how to make wine. I'd never tasted wine, but once, and a boy from school uh, on, the, on the side of the lake over yonder, one day he said, here, Danny, taste it. And it was at Boone's Farm. Everybody used to drink that Boone, Strawberry Hill and all that, remember that stuff? I don't even know if that stuff's still around. Hey, I see you nodding your head. Is that, are you, your brand right now, brother. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But uh, that's everybody liked Boone's Farm back then. Uh, Strawberry Hill wine. And we went down there, and uh, and he gave me that. And I tell you, I said, "Shoot, Lord, have mercy. It'd be all right without that burning, whatever that is. That was alcohol. And uh, I'd never tasted beer except my uncle gave me a taste of it. And my uncle would pop a beer like that and put salt on. I just load it with salt. I don't know why he done that. And uh, you just see the salt laying on top of that thing. And I thought, God, hey, man, make you throw up. Well, these boys want to make this muscadine wine. And they made it, and they put it up in a jar and put it in his basement about two weeks. Finally, the big night came. And, boy, we was all ready to camp out. And they said, now, we're going to get our wine out. And they opened that stuff, and sure enough, Sure enough, buddy, they'd knock you down, buddy. I mean, Lord, what a smell. I, I, and it was warm. It had been in their basement. It was the summertime. And they was going to drink that like that right there. And, uh, and they all started drinking little sips of it. And they, they acted like they got, I don't know if they got drunk or not. I, I didn't. I didn't. I put it to my lips and tasted it. It was something in me. I said, this is stupid. This is stupid. And, uh, and they drank. They was all going, uh, I think they was faking it, trying to act like they was drunk. And that was the closest I ever come to being in a drunken uh, uh, party or anything like that. But thank God, I mean, if, I, if I'd have been a little older after I got out of school, I'm sure I would have tried it and it would have got a lot worse. Uh, but I tell you, I was in that sin and then we was, stay, we, we was going into Roses down here in Morganton and, and getting a, a, a little rock and roll out here and there, and taking it here and taking it there, getting more and more into sin, cussing, uh, lying, uh, stealing, I was a wicked sinner. I was a wicked sinner. I'm telling you that night I went to Nebo Baptist Church. I was in my sin. I was in my sin. And I've been thinking about it in the last few days. Uh, I've been trying to remember how I felt back then before I got saved. And, and it was, I remember a yucky, sort of a yucky sort of feeling. And I remember uh, going that night, that church that night, and my cousin uh, stood right beside me. You've heard me tell it over and over and over, so I won't tell 
the whole thing. We were sitting on this side about where Joe and Lorene sitting. And buddy, he looked over at me and said, let's go get saved. And I said, I ain't ready. And about 15 minutes later, people kept going, keep, people kept going here, going there, going to the altar. The altar was filling up. I punched him and I said, let's go. He took off, I took off. And that night, I fell on my knees. And ladies and gentlemen, that night, the Lord pulled me out of a horrible pit. He reached down. I mean, he brought me out, brother. He brought me out. I've not been everything I should be. I've not been everything I could be. I've not been everything I want to be. I've not been everything people expect me to be. But from that night till this, there's been something different down inside my heart. I got saved. I'm undone by the mercies of Jesus. Undone by the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. I got saved. I didn't get a dose of religion. I didn't become a Baptist. Brother, I got saved. I got saved. I got saved. He brought me out that night. Hallelujah. I got home that night, and I've told you before, my mom was walking through the house with a dish rag. I never seen my mom in the house when she didn't have a rag in her hand. I don't think. She just went through the house a wiping. I like that, that table right there, she'd have wiped it. She'd have seen one fingerprint on it. And she's wiping up through the house like that right there. And I walked in the door that night and there's something inside me said, tell her. I said, Mom, I've been to church. She said, well, good, son. I'm glad you went. And I started to go on to bed and something said, tell her. And I was like, who is that talking in there? <laughs> Honest to goodness, that had never been there before. Somebody was in me. He said, tell her. And I said, Mom, I got saved. <laughs> and boy, she hugged me and I hugged her. Lord, have mercy. I mean, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. I can explain it like this right here. I heard an old, old story. How a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk a lot about songs tonight because that verse said he put a new song in my heart. I've always liked music, still do to this day. Got song on my heart every time. you never seen me when they want a song playing in the back of my head. I always have, but I'm glad he put a new song in my heart. Hallelujah. I, I heard about his healing of his cleansing power, revealing how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came to me and brought the victory. Amen. I'm telling you, he brought me out. Number two, he set my feet on a rock. Buddy, you set somebody's feet on a rock, you ain't going nowhere. Steady ground underneath. Nothing shaky, nothing crooked, nothing unstable. I ain't looking for something else to base my life on. I'm not trying to find the truth out there somewhere. I'm not trying to find myself. I'd pick the pippies, used to, and I'd pick them up, and I'd say, uh, what's going on, man? I'd say, I'm going to California, man, try to find myself. You ain't in California, dude. You're sitting right there, I can tell you that. Uh, but it, you know what they're saying? I have no identity. I don't know what I am. I don't, listen, one thing about being saved, bless the Lord, brother, he set my feet on a rock, amen. I thought about songs. I'm gonna tell you about some songs tonight. Uh, are you listening to my mic's on? Uh, am I a rock? My shield, my Jesus, he's real. I can feel him in my soul. Whoa, whoa, one day he saved my soul and he made, made me whole. My Lord, he's real. I can feel him in my soul. You see, them songs ain't just words to us. He's my rock. He's my rock. He's what I stand on. How about this one? Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide 
myself in thee. Amen. How about this? On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Now, if the world goes study evolution, they'll go study where we come from and ancient alien theories and the giants and everything else. Well, brother, we'll just stand right on the blessed rock of ages while the ages roll. Thank God it never, listen, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Hallelujah, brother. He set my feet on a rock. Amen. I like this one. He hideth my soul in the clefts of the rock and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. Amen. I'm not worried about science discoveries. I'm not worried about my health. I mean, our health's gonna go one day sooner or later. I'm not worried about retirement. I'm not worried about not having hope. I'm not worried about being a bitter old man one day, sitting in a wheelchair, hating everybody. Listen, brother, my feet are on the rock. My future is bright. I've got something to look forward to. Hallelujah. He set my feet on the rock. I see people I went to school with. Bless their hearts. So I'm today, actually. I ain't seen many, many years. I, I wouldn't have known him. Lord, they look awful. Really? I think, do I look like y'all? But I got a little hope because they always know me and I don't know them. That's encouraging. But uh, he said, hey, Danny. I would not have known him if it hadn't been for his sister. And I remember her from school because she's been to church here. And I thought, Lord, have mercy. I still meet people that I went to school with. They're still out there searching. Search. You know people like that? Still looking. Going from one relationship to the other. Going moving from one job to the other, one car to the other, one house to the other, never happy. You got one religion, one day they're this, one day they're Jehovah's Witness. Next time you meet them, they're, they're an atheist. Next time they're there, I tell you, hallelujah, my feet's on the rock. My feet's on the rock. I know whom I have believed in and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Lord, you ever heard the words of that song? It said, I know not how thy saving faith to me he did impart, nor how believing in his word brought peace within my heart. But I know who I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Set my feet on a rock. Doesn't matter who gets elected president. It doesn't matter what the nation, it don't matter what Putin or Kong Jong, whatever his name is. It don't matter what them crazy people do. Brother, our feet's on the rock. Our name's on the roll. There ain't nothing the devil can do about it. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Hey Amen. All things work together for them that love God, for them that are called according to his purpose. No man can pluck us out of his hand. I tell you, we got it made, people, and know it. Hey Amen. We got it made. I tell you, hallelujah, he set my feet on a rock. Number three, he established my goings. He established my goings. I didn't even know what I wanted till I got saved. I know now what I want. There's no doubt. I know, I know, I know people in their 40s, in their 50s, that are still looking for their, where they fit in. And they're still searching. Move to California. Move to here. Move to there. I, mean, I tried drugs. I went through the drug scene. I went through the hippie scene. I went through the L.A. club scene. I went through the uh, 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 promiscuous uh, lifestyle and all of that. I still just don't know where I fit in. Hallelujah tonight, brother. He established my going. I will tell you something tonight. I wouldn't trade places with nobody in this world. I've got problems. I've got heavy burdens. Right now, you know that. I've got, I mean, stuff is just, Tamar, I'm telling you though, brother, I'm the, 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 uh, the, the future is bright. I'm telling you, brother, what he started in me, he'll not quit till it's done. He'll, he'll perfect that which concerneth me. He put me, established my goings. I'm not looking for something to believe in. Now, when I, before I got saved, I'll tell you, I got saved, I got, I graduated high school. 
And everybody said, go to college, go to college, go to college, go to college, go to college. I'm not saying it's wrong to go to college. It is most of the time, but not all the time. Some people need to go and should go. Thank God they did get to go. But most people, it ruins. I don't care if you make a million dollars a week if you're full of the devil and living in sin. Amen? You know, am I right? Yes, sir, brother. I'd rather my kids be broke and live for God than to have everything in this world and live out in sin. And I'm going to tell you something tonight. I, I, they said, go to college, go to college. I said, well, I don't want to go to college. And I had two or three small colleges uh, talking to me about playing ball for them and stuff like Montreat and some of these local, you know, over in Black Mountain and stuff like that. I was too little. I know I was too, I was too little. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I thought, I, I can't do that. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even want to go. And I went over and enrolled in McDowell Tech. And I said, I'll take some basic classes. That's what they said you're supposed to do. They said, what do you want to do, Danny? I said, I don't know. I guess I'll, I don't know. I'll be a basketball coach. I reckon I'll, that way I'll get to play all the time and get paid for it. And they, and, uh, and they said, uh, all right. So I said, that's what I want to do. I can't think of nothing else I want to do. And I went over there and enrolled in McDowell Tech. And I remember getting up early in the morning and driving over there to school. I'll never forget it. I had this little old Volkswagen. We put big tires on it, about that wide. Back when people was customizing Volkswagen, they cut the cut the the, the rim, I mean the fenders off. I, some of y'all might remember they put on a bug, big tires about that wide. The only thing didn't have it about forty something horsepower. They wouldn't go 15, 20 miles an hour up a hill. And uh, but I had one of them things, and I drove it to McDowell Tech, and then I, I did trade and bought that MG right after that. And I remember thinking I. It's, I, mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is this what I really want to do? I, I feel stupid. And man, you think I hated high school. I really hated college. I sat down there that person that day, and that teacher come in there, that smart aleck, and she got up there and he said, uh, I, I think it was a woman teacher on that one. She said, uh, she said uh, now look, I don't care if you listen. I don't care if you pass. I'm getting paid to teach this course. If you're dumb enough to pay some money to sit in here and not listen, that's, that's up to you. I couldn't care less. I'm going to teach it. If you want to learn it, fine. If you don't, fine. That's what she said. I said, that, that suits me just fine. Uh, me and you get along good. Uh, you don't care if I learn. I don't either. Uh, uh, and I, I said, I have no idea. Anybody this dumb? I ain't got no business sitting here, no way. And, and I remember thinking, I remember thinking all the way through school. I remember thinking, what is this doing for me? I know y'all don't want me to talk like that in front of the kids. But I remember thinking, what good is this doing? They put me in, in, uh, in uh, French class in, in 11th grade. Stuck me in French class. Uh, no, it's 12th grade. I said, I do not want to learn French. And, and Miss Kelly, my teacher, uh, uh, she said, Danny, you are so smart. You could learn anything if you just try. I said, Miss Kelly, why do, I, why, why do I want to learn French? I'm never going to France. And if somebody from France comes here, they can speak English if they want to talk to me. I still believe that. I still believe that. Why do we have to learn all the other languages? Stay in your own country. If you don't come here, learn English. Amen. Amen. That's good common sense. Ain't too common no more. But anyway, I, she said, Danny, I said, I want out of here. So I dropped French class and took PE2. PE2 is nothing but PE1 uh, later on in the day. We got to spend two periods a day in the gym. And uh, when I was sitting there in that class that day, I thought, Lord, I don't like this. This is ridiculous. And something said, well, if you're going to get a good job, you need an education. I said, well, I guess that's right. I, I try to get two years in, basically. But I didn't have no purpose. I, did, I, did, I honestly did not know what I wanted to do, where I fit in. And I, and I feel so sorry for people that are still like that. I know people that's gone to college four years and come out and still feel like that. And they blow set near eighty thousand dollars, and still owe twenty and twenty five thousand. And don't even, why would you go to college? And don't even know what you want to do. Why? Somebody pressure you. That's why. And uh, and, and when you get twenty five or something, you might can figure it out. But not at sixteen, seventeen. Uh, and yeah, unless you're a really, really unusual kid. And I remember thinking, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? And I remember feeling empty. I never forget that. I remember feeling empty. I remember feeling empty. And then when I got saved, and I especially after I got called to preach, never from that moment till this have I ever wondered what my purpose is. Never, not one time. 
I've doubted a lot. I've messed up a lot. I've wondered where. I've wondered when. But I've never wondered what. I said I've wondered where I should be. And I wondered when. But I've never wondered what. I know what I'm supposed to do. I know it. I know where I came from. I know what my purpose is. I know what I'm doing. And brother, in the dark of the midnight, have I oft hid my face while the storm howled above me and there's no hiding place. In the crash of the thunder, precious Lord, hear my cry. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Songs like that mean something to me now. Just songs like this. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful in my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Lord in mercy, whoever wrote them songs got the same thing in them that I got in me. Lord, when I heard them great songs, I wouldn't give you a dime for a song like that before I got saved. I heard them and I thought, ah, it's a little starchy. But I'm telling you, when I got saved, them song, I heard them songs, I mean, just like uh, I, I remember hearing that. I, I stand amazed in the present. I remember hearing Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And I thought, I know what that's talking about. He paid it all on the cross. My sin, my wickedness, my almost getting drunk that Friday night, my cuss word, my stealing, my, listen, brother, he paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Hallelujah. I'm not just going around in circles. I know where I'm going. Somebody told me the other day, who was that? Might have been one of you guys at the house. I read, said, wife called her husband one day. He's on his way home from work. She said, honey, be careful. Some fool is driving down the interstate on the wrong way. She said, please be careful. He was right and he said, honey, that ain't nothing. There's hundreds of them. For the rest of you, it was him on the wrong side of the interstate. Oh, uh, I, I'm going to tell you something, brother. Uh, he, he was a nut going the wrong way. And I tell you what, I'm glad one day I found out I'm going the right way, and I'm glad I ain't just going around in circles. I like that song. I like the song that this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my perfect submission. All is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. I tell you, brother, you can't beat stuff like that right there. Woo! Hallelujah. And then the last thing I've done, said about 10 songs, he gave me a new song. He gave me a new song. For a long time I traveled down a long, lonely road. See how that fits? My heart was so heavy when I almost got drunk. In sin I sank low when I stole something at Roses. Then I heard about Jesus at Nebo Baptist Revival. What a wonderful hour when I went. I was glad that I found out he could what? He could bring me out by his saving power. Thank God I'm free, free, free from this world of sin. Been washed in the blood of Jesus. I'm not going home tonight and craving drugs. I'm not going home tonight and wishes I was in Las Vegas or partying somewhere. I can lay down and say, good night, Lord. You give us a good day. Hallelujah. God's still on the throne, people. He's still alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. It's good to be saved. He gave me a new song. Lord in mercy, I like to jump up on this thing. Amen. How about this one? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. You know what about that? Fanny Crosby. She got the same thing we got. Amen. Same thing we got. I'll be honest with you. I 
when I got saved, you know, I played in a band, but I quit for years. So I never even picked up an instrument until till I got saved. And they said, well, we can sing in church now. And I said, really? And so I started singing a little church songs that before I'd have thought was a little silly. And I'll be honest with you. Make sure this is on. I got, I, I, I thought about this today. Yesterday, actually, and last night when I was studying. And I remember one of them mornings going to McDowell Tech before I got saved. And I was driving up, I think it was raining. I was 17. And I hadn't been out and done a whole lot of stuff, but I, I'd done enough to feel bad and guilty. And it's bad weather, raining. And there's an old bunch of old songs. Some of them old songs now, when I hear them, I get sick. You know, it, it brings back some of that old, old feeling and stuff. And I remember feeling real empty. And there's a song popular back then. It went like this. I can do it. Oh, Rod Stewart. Y'all know who Rod Stewart is? Lord, what a pitiful excuse for a human being. I feel so sorry for it. And he sung this. Oh, Maggie, I can't help crying over you. You made a first class fool out of me. I was blind as a fool can be. You stole my heart. That's not the way it's supposed to go. Remember that song? Down, 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 down. All right. And I'll never forget that. And I remember that song, that very song, playing when I was going to. McDowell Tech that song and I didn't like it I didn't like him that's who Melissa Etheridge that lesbian she patterns right after trying to sing real horse she trying to sing horse just like him like Rod Stewart he made a first class fool out of me but I was blind as a fool can be you know, something stupid something like that and you know what I remember feeling yuck does anybody in here remember before you got saved feeling yuck? Just like, I didn't know what it was. I didn't realize that it was like, you know, I, was, I wanted a new life or I need to get saved. I didn't know that's what it was. I just knew I was missing something. You know what they call that? Lost. Lost without God, y'all. And I got saved. And he put a new song in my heart. I remember getting up in church. Danny Castle in Nebo at Bethel Free Will Baptist Church. And I got up there and sung this. Oh, don't look for me to go where I used to go before. I don't go there anymore. I found a better way. Oh, don't look for me to say some things I used to say before. I don't say them anymore. I found a better way song in my heart. Oh, I found a better way, brighter path for my feet. My heart joy so sweet. I found a better way. And since I found the church and I found a place to pray, and there I found the Lord, I found a better way. Amen. Don't look for me to be just like I used to be. There's been a change in me, i found a better way. Well, I may not walk so proud, and I may not boast so loud, but I'm bound for heaven now, i found a better way. Amen. Oh, i found a better way, brighter path for my feet. My heart joy so sweet, i found a better way. And since i found the church, and i found a place to pray and there I found the Lord I found a better way and I got up and sung that in church and, and some of my friends thought oh, isn't that a little corny and I, thought, I don't care what you think buddy right. at, at beats old Maggie I can't quit crying over you you made a first class fool out of me but I'm as blind as a fool can be you stole my heart and that ain't the way love's supposed to be that's a bunch of junk brother 
I found a better way. He put a new song in my heart. Thank God, brother, that even praise unto our God. That's what he said. For a long time I traveled down a long, lonely road. My heart was so heavy and sent us ain't close. Come on, Miss Desi, let's sing it. Come on, Brother Jason, get that bass guitar and let's crank that up one time. I want you to think about, I want you to think about, uh, we're going to have a little concert here tonight. Hey, <laughs> you got one to sing? You got some uh, uh, of, uh, what do you call them old, old people? ZZ Top or something. Pink Floyd or somebody. <laughs> she got legs. <laughs> <laughs> Big flappy white ones. All right, all right. Let's let's all stand. We're gonna sing tonight. Let's rejoice in being saved tonight. What key is it? Yeah. yeah. Amen. That sounds. All right. Let's all sing tonight. Everybody, go ahead. Ready, save now. them songs are, they're happy, they make you feel good and rejoice and fresh. That old song of fools out there tonight, that's just a song of fools, y'all. Them old songs out there in the world, they're dead. And them people out there, they're dead. They're dead. She that lives in places is dead while she lives. Oh, Ariana Grande, she's dead. They're dead. They're dead right now. They got a, they got a, a, a dead spirit. They're like zombies. Walking around. Amen. Hallelujah. Now listen. I want, as we, as we go tonight, I want you to pray um, a special prayer request for a lot of folks you know we got. And uh, pray for each other. Invite somebody else. Be here Wednesday night. Come praying. Bring the whole family. Last Wednesday night was one of the best services we've had on Wednesday night. I don't know when. It, we couldn't quit. Couldn't quit. It, that's how good it got in here Wednesday night. Y'all that were here know what I'm talking about. It was rich. 
So uh, be here Wednesday night. Come praying. Bring somebody with you.